all, it's Carly. Welcome back to High Country Homesteading. Today I'm going to be discussing what it was like prepping and getting the garden ready for the fall garden. I've never had a fall garden before. This is my first time. So there was a lot of new things to me. I knew that it was going to be a little bit hard to start ripping some things out from the summer garden that maybe was almost done producing or I wish I could have seen and waited if something was going to produce but it was just taking up too much room in my garden and it needed to go and try again next year. So I have a few items like that like cucumbers and artichokes and things like that that needed to go and so I started cleaning up the garden of anything that had already been spent, things that were definitely not thriving or were not going to produce, and made room for planting some new items. So I'll go over throughout this video which items I took out and which items that I've planted from seed. But this is shot over a couple of days. You'll see me in a few different frumpy outfits. <laughs> but... I started off with my broccoli bed. So this broccoli ended up thriving in this bed, though I planted it way too late. Um, I didn't get any broccoli out of it, although it did start to grow, um, but went to seed pretty quickly. But I started it way too late, it was too warm, and we have some new broccoli starts this year that I started indoors and we're going to be planting them in the same bed because they did well here. I am leaving one rogue sunflower that happened to grow. This is the spot that I grew sunflowers last year so I had one sprout up and I'm glad I did because this one ended up having like 10 heads. It was so beautiful. So I left the sunflower in but I went around. I left the marigolds in as well though they're pretty spent but I think they have a little more life in them. So left the sunflower, left the marigold, and I'm going to be planting new broccoli plant starts all around it. Next I moved over to my gladiolas. These were definitely spent, drooping over, and well past their prime. A couple of things about the gladiolas. I love them. They're gorgeous, and they were a hot spot for hummingbirds this year. It was so fun to watch hummingbird come. They loved the gladiolas. Um, I love the colors that I chose. These just romantic, like deep purple and a smoky purple, and also this really super tropical orange and red and yellow color. I loved them, but they are too big, really, and not a great vase or bouquet flower for a vase or a kitchen table. They're just too big. Um, so although I love them in the garden, I'm going to keep them in the garden, but I typically want as many vase flowers or flowers that I can pick and make bouquet from and bring them in the house. So next year I'm not going to dedicate half a bed to the gladiolas, but I'm going to scatter the bulbs around to different areas to make sure that the hummingbirds come and use them and make the garden look pretty, but I'm just going to put them in places that I have space. Um, so they don't take up too much room, but I loved having them. They were really beautiful. The spiders, like this spider, like to make their home in them. I worked around him a little bit because I didn't want to bother him, but uh, we eventually had to let that one go and put him somewhere else. But love that the hummingbirds love these, but I'm not going to dedicate as big of a space to them next year. So they're getting cleaned out and new food getting planted here. Next to the gladiolas is where I planted some of the butternut squash and the spaghetti squash. So these plants are looking pretty spent as well. There's still squash growing on them, but their leaves are pretty yellow and don't have a lot of nutrients in them. They're very droopy. Some of them have turned brown. So I didn't pull these out because they are still producing a couple of squash. So I'm going to let them go for as long as they can, but I did trim off everything that looked pretty dead so that energy is not getting flowed to places that it doesn't need to be. So I ended up trimming a lot of this away just so I could try to make room for more produce to go in the empty spots and kind of move around the squash so that I could free up as much of this bed as possible, but a lot of it is not looking great. I don't know why I planted squash in these beds, butternut squash, last year, 
I planted less seeds and I got more butternut squash than this year. I probably planted three times the amount of seeds and I got three times less butternut squash. Um, as I've mentioned before, I think a lot of it has to do with the rain. I think we got a lot more rain this year than last year and I think it's caused a lot of rot issues for my squash. So next year I'm going to try to combat that, get them off the ground a lot better with some trellising instead of letting them lay on the ground and be too damp for too long. So I'm thinking maybe that's what happened, but they definitely were not the healthiest squash plants this year. And that's sad because going into fall and winter, I would have liked to have put up a lot more squash than I'm going to, but you know, trial and error. So we will do better next year. But yeah, if some of these needed to go, they were not looking so great. But we got a couple of squash growing in there, a couple on the ground, but we'll free this up for some more food. And one of the saddest things that had to go were these cucumbers. They are looking pretty yellow. They're getting pretty short and squat. So I decided that these cucumbers had to go. They were definitely, I would say, pretty disappointing. I mean, we did get a couple of good ones. And we made some refrigerator pickles this year. But I planted two different kinds of cucumbers. And I wasn't very happy with the variety. So I think I'm going to try a different variety next year. I tried the National Pickling Cucumber and the Ashley Cucumber. And the Ashley Cucumber did absolutely nothing. I got this like tiny short squat cucumber from it and the plants didn't grow more than like two inches tall. This National Pickling Cucumber did finally vine and go up the trellis, but the pickles were super spiky, like you couldn't even touch them. Um, because they hurt your hand too much. So I feel like something was wrong there. So we're going to try cucumbers again, uh, do something different, but I think I want, I care about the squash more than I care about cucumbers. So I'm going to give these trellises to the squash next year. So this is where my sad, sad eggplant plot was. You, as you can see, these didn't grow at all. Um, that was my mistake. I put them out way too early and I tried eggplant in another spot from seed and they didn't grow whatsoever. So we'll try eggplant again next year, but for now clearing out this spot so we can put some of our brassica starts in. Moving down to the other side, this was our Brussels sprouts. I again put these and the cabbage out way too late. The cabbage looked like it was starting to get some heads on it. The Brussels sprouts did not produce anything. They just kept getting eaten and it was too hot. So I have new starts for cabbage, for Brussels sprouts. So we're going to dedicate this whole bed to those and see if we can get anything throughout the fall and the winter this time. Here's where I grew most of my borage. I planted borage because I wanted to make sure that I had a lot of bees come to my zucchini plants, which are planted right next to this, because last year I had a really disappointing zucchini season. Um, I planted quite a bit and I got maybe three zucchinis out of it, which didn't seem to make any sense. So I figured it was an issue of pollination. So I planted the borage, but I, it honestly, didn't feel worth it to me. I think it was bushy, it took up too much space, and the bees liked plenty of other flowers that were smaller and would have done the trick. So I don't think I'm gonna plant borage next year. It wasn't that pretty, to be honest, and I'd rather have prettier flowers that the bees like just as well. This is my last remaining carrot in my green stock. It was a good experiment. This is by far the biggest carrot that I've ever grown. Um, you know, it's still not, something to enter in a county fair, but this is the biggest carrot that I've grown. This is a Danvers carrot. Um, so they did really well actually in the green stock, but I just don't think it's feasible to plant like a whole green stock of carrots. It's just, you can only fit like three in each little slot. So that's just not really a sustainable option. I also planted these cylindrical beets thinking that they would be similar to the carrots because the cylindrical size of them. 
but they really did not do very well at all. The green stock was really, really dry. The soil is super crumbly and dry. So I'm thinking maybe they didn't get enough water. Um, but I only got these really kind of short round beets out of them and they were super dry and crumbly. So I don't think that worked very well here. I'm gonna try beets in one spot in the raised bed garden and see if they do any better, but maybe it's the type of beets that I got. I don't know, maybe I should try a different one next year. I'm harvesting now the last of the green beans. We only had a little bit more to do and then I'm going to rip all of these out and plant new ones. I only had one planting of green beans actually vine up this trellis and none of my other green beans did that. And this was the bush bean variety so it's pretty confusing to me. I'm not sure why that happened but I'm definitely not gonna dedicate trellis space to beans next year. Um, if they do need some trellising, I'll maybe put in some kind of impromptu wiring for them to do that but it didn't seem like they really needed it so these are going out and a new planting of beans are going in beans weren't even something that i had originally planned to grow in the summer but i'm really happy that i did because it was definitely the most prolific thing that we ate throughout the summer so hopefully i can get one more flush of green beans out of this new crop before the frost comes in october My kids had been begging me to harvest these potatoes for a while, so I finally caved in. This was the beginning of July, and I thought that the leaves were turning yellow and kind of dying back, so I thought it was time, but I, this was way too early. Next time, I need to wait a lot longer to harvest potatoes, but, you know, that's a lesson learned. But the kids really wanted to help me harvest these potatoes. I told them that. They could and that was their job when the time came so we finally did it and we ended up getting about 37 pretty small to medium potatoes out of these these were organic gold potatoes that I just bought at the grocery store and I sprouted on my own and I planted I think 11 of them in this in-ground space and they grew super well. I, you know, hardly had to do anything with them. I watered them a bit to begin with, and then I let the rain water them. So I am happy with the little bit of harvest that we did get. But my neighbor, who's lived here for a long time, told me that Kennebec potatoes grow here really well. So I think next year I'll maybe try those and get a better harvest from them. But for gold potatoes, we'll eat off these for a couple meals during the winter and I'm pretty happy about that. Even if the harvest didn't turn out quite the gold mine as I had wanted, the kids really had a good time digging for potatoes. This was definitely their favorite part of the garden season so far. Uh, it was fun having them count them. They were in charge of putting them in the box and they loved getting to hold them, dig for them. So if anything, it's a good little activity for kids. So now that we have some of the old cleared away and comes the new, I'm planting some jade beans and some Oregon sugar peas. Um, so I'm planting these in the spaces where I had the beans before and also where I had some of that borage and some of the old zucchini plants that were already spent. So. That's where I'm planting these two items and then a lot of the other spaces that we cleared out are going to be dedicated to carrots. I've never fall planted carrots before so and I know that's the best time to do so so I'm really hopeful this year I planted three different kinds of carrots. Um, I think I did the rainbow carrots, the scarlet nantes, and the danvers so I'm hoping to get at least one kind of successful crop of carrots this year. It's my goal. Carrots are my favorite vegetable um, after broccoli. So I really would like to have carrots this year and I know they last a long time. So I really want to be able to have that food source for my family. So back to the brassica bed, we have everything cleared out and I'm bringing out all my starts for cabbage and Brussels sprouts. I believe I have about 12 to 15 of each kind. So I'm going to fill this bed with the starts with as many as I can. I'm putting 
three in a row back to front and then filling the whole 12 foot bed with them. So I'm hoping these do really well. I'm hoping they don't get eaten up by bugs before they can start thriving. Um, but I know that's probably bound to happen. But hopefully we can get some out of these. I'm excited to see if they work. This is the coolest corner of my garden. So I'm hoping that all the cool temperatures will help give them a good start. And we're ending where we started at the broccoli bed. These broccoli starts aren't as big as the ones I put in in the spring. So I hope they grow. Um, I don't know. We'll see. They did well in the spring, um, at least getting started before they went to seed. So I hope that this area can get the same kind of growth. But I think I have 15 broccoli starts to put in this bed. And I'm just putting them in the same order I did around the marigolds, um, three in each row. And then I do run out of starts at the end of this bed. So I end up planting some seeds of some bunching onions. So we'll see if those take off and I'm gonna let this beautiful sunflower grow and hopefully come this winter, we can have some broccoli to cook. Last but not least, this is my first blushing tomato. So I'm so excited to start harvesting these. Finally got them to blush as I'm putting in the fall garden. <laughs> 